Welcome to the Journey to Multifamily Millions podcast. Start your journey today of building wealth through multifamily real estate investing. Listen to inspiring conversations with experts in the field from every step of the process. It doesn't matter if you are new to multifamily real estate or if you're already the savvy pro, we cover it all. And now your host, founder and CEO of Zana Investments, Tim Little. All right. Okay. Originally from the UK, Dinesh Shalat is an entrepreneur, real estate investor, and digital marketing professional based in New York City. He's passionate about financial literacy and helping others make more effective choices around wealth building. Along with his business partner, Ralph, Dinesh founded RealVest, a company that allows people to invest in commercial real estate without the risks and headaches of being a landlord. Dinesh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah, super excited to be here and, and provide any value I can for, for your audience. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, great. So I gave everyone a, a high-level uh, high um, overview of your background. But on this show, we really try to focus on that journey to uh, being a multifamily investor. So please talk a little bit more about how you got started in real estate and then more specifically uh, multifamily. Absolutely, yeah. So I, as you can tell from the accent, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the UK, I'm from Birmingham in the UK. So I often tell, tell folks in America who not heard of it, not Birmingham, Alabama, Birmingham in the UK, which is uh, the home of the, of the Peaky Blinders. Uh, Terrific Netflix show. If you haven't checked it out, I'd, I'd definitely recommend it. So I was yeah, born and raised there, went to London for college and then, um, you know, left, left the UK as part of an internship program, like, I, um, where they send, uh, you know, 110 sort of British people, um, over to New York and they do, they do the same for folk from America. They take them to London, mostly place them in banks, uh, lived in New York for a year. Decided that, you know, after that, I was like, you know what, I, I, I find my home. This is, this is, this is my, this is my, it's my place. Um, and did a lot to stay here yeah, and, you know, did a bit of back and forth, trying to sort out these, I won't bore you with the, with the with specific details of that, but anyone who's been through that knows that, that, that they don't make it that easy for you here. <laughs> uh, but thankfully after that, I, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, I, I got my green card after a while and then, um, I'm, I've, I recently became an American citizen of this year. I did earlier this year. So, um, yeah, I'm th thankfully I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm deal now. <laughs> uh, but in terms of my real estate journey, I said, I, uh, about five, about five or six years ago, uh, I purchased a, a, a condo in the Bronx, uh, which, you know, I, and I thought at that point, I thought you have to invest where you live. Right. So in the Bronx was the closest kind of place uh, to where I live in like the Harlem area of New York. Um, that, that I could kind of afford to buy at the time. So, uh, I, I bought that, um, uh, did some rehab and then rented it out. And then, you know, after I got the tenant in, um, after all the common charges and, 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 and mortgage charges, I was basically netting two, three hundred dollars even. And I, I thought, you know, there's all these folks that are making a lot of money in real estate. I'm not sure they're doing it in this way. Cause this, this is going to take me forever, like to do what I just did. And for the sake of two or $300. Uh, so I, I went to a, a local meetup and I, you know, I found that folk were investing, you know, not how I say so, but investing like further out than where they lived up in Connecticut and, um, you know, um, upstate New York and Jersey and things like that. So that like opened up my my kind of mind, you know, my mind into thinking, okay, let's explore this a bit further. Did some research, you know, uh, followed, you know, followed a bunch of folk on YouTube on like this, how to say turnkey investing. Again, I didn't know what it was before I started exploring this, uh, explored a, uh, a, a you know, interviewed a, a few turnkey providers. Um, I landed on one in, uh, Ohio and, you know, bought my, bought, bought a bet, bought, bought my first property there, you know, for in cash. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a pretty nice experience. It's all by package for you, said you right to the point where they even, I uh, was even received a, a, a hamper, you know, would have, you know, wine and cheese given say congratulations on your, on your investment, which is, which was nice. But what I found was when I, my, my, my purchase, you know, I, I purchased it, it was cash flowing well. Uh, my strategy was to buy more of these, right? I wanted this to be scalable. That's why I 
looked at investing out, 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 outside of where I lived in New York for the higher cash flow. Uh, and uh, when it came to, uh, you know, my next step was to appraise it, take the money out, right? I wasn't, wasn't going to do a delayed mortgage. Um, so, you know, I was able to, uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to leverage the equity from that, from that property and then purchase it again, rinse and repeat, right? But when it came to appraising it, I discovered that I'd basically paid, it, it was worth, it was, it appraised at half, almost half of what I paid for it. Um, so, but yeah, cause yeah, part of me was absolutely a little bit wounded, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, again, this is, this is the thing, right? So part of me was, was a bit wounded, it was, was wounded, but then the other part, the light bulb went off, right? I saw opportunity. I was like, hang on, yeah, I'm not some crazy wealthy dentist in, in Australia, half around the world. I actually live in America. Um, uh, I can, you know, I just need to, oh, I can pay at market. I just can't pay above market, significantly above market. That's what I was missing. Missing link was there. Um, and, uh, all I need is I already had a property inspect. I knew enough from my education, from watching the YouTube videos, always get a property in, in inspection, regardless of, you know, if it's turnkey or whatever, you know, the, the company that I went with didn't by default offer, uh, offer, um, inspections, but. I insisted and they were like, they thought, you know, they, they found someone and recommend, I rec they, they recommended a few folk and I, I chose one from that. And I'm glad I did. It worked out well. The property was, was, was fine. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't just needed, I already had a property inspector. I just needed, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a broker and another property management company. And after interviewing a few property, uh, uh brokers, uh, sorry, really say brokers, uh, I, I found the broker that I ended up purchasing several properties with and, you know, and she had a connection with the property management company. So it was almost turnkey, but without the turnkey add on fees. Right. So, uh, and then the strategy actually worked, right? Because then if you're buying at retail, mortgage will generally, uh, will, 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 they'll do an appraisal, but you know, barring anything crazy, um, they're going to give, they're going to basically base it on what you purchased it at. So. Um, after that, I was able to buy a few, like seven, eight properties. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I was like, let me test those things out a minute. Cause I think at, 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 you can generally buy 10 under conventional mortgages. Yeah. So I was, you know, I went, I, I just thought about, you know, I, I, I reassessed things and, you know, I, I'd, I'd heard this multifamily thing, but I just, you know, I went to a meetup in New York here where, 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 where someone organized, where someone who, um, in the space, pretty prominent, you know, she, she'd organize these meetups and, um, it was, and, and again, when she first tried to explain it to me of how this is passive and, you know, I was just very confused by it. And she's like, okay, I was like, wait, I need to give you money and you don't actually like run this property, but like, actually, but like, Hey, I don't, but then, you know, you've not been there or anything and I'm not going to get to be there. And this is, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is, this is. <laughs> Sounds sketchy as hell. I'm, I'm out. I like, <laughs> and I didn't get out of time and I dismissed that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to continue with my single family thing. But yeah, as I said, like the pandemic happens and you know, you, you get, you get time to a bit of time to, to reassess things. And, um, what I realized was that, yeah, this is actually a pretty strong model. It's a way that it's not, you know, buying these buildings aren't just for the hedge fund boys and girls and, 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 and you know, the old Uber wealth, the, you know people can come together and purchase these things. Um, and, and it can have benefits for everyone involved, right? This is, um, and, and that's when I, you know, started investing, you know, passively, I invest several, several properties passively. Um, and I then thought, you know, partnered up with, with my business partner, Ralph, uh, who I met again in person at a beach of just before the pandemic. And, you know, he was doing his wholesale thing and I was like, Hey Ralph, this is, this is a pretty strong way of, I think, building wealth. This is our way to really be able to scale. You know, I was doing my single family thing and this could be a way to scale. Um, um, and, and our way to, to, to really, you know, provide value, you know, provide value based on our core values, right. Of, of, of sharing this knowledge, right. Of being able to share the power of real estate. And it's, it's, it's that I, you know, I've not seen many of the models that have this, this, the same approach that can have this universal benefit to, for, 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 for mo all the stakeholders involved. Yeah. Wow. There's really a lot to unpack in there. And, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to rewind a little bit, uh, because I'm a firm believer that we learn a lot more from our mistakes mm -hmm. than we do from our successes. So if you could talk about how it is that you wound up 
paying so much over the the appraised value um you know what that how that how that came to be was there no appraisal on the property that you bought um that might have given you the indication just yeah, like talk talk through that a little bit for us if you could that's a good question you know i was i, I so i knew from again from watching real estate videos and watching you know just 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 or, or reading more about you know just about sort of growth and success and like entrepreneur entrepreneurial success a lot of it is just doing <laughs> like and and as for to stay and that can get you in a lot of trouble if you're not careful with these things right so um the assessment that i made was at the time again truthfully i didn't know that it would be a you know i that the bank would then value it hindsight of course right i didn't realize that i thought they would just value it based on what i purchased it uh, purchased it right um I didn't realize that, oh no, there's a separate process that if you do buy these things in cash, that it can vary particularly if you are, if you are going through like a third party, so to speak, right? A, I, a turnkey company. I didn't realize there was this like process of it probably would happen at this stage. Um, I, again, I just thought it would be worthwhile paper, right? Simple as I didn't, it wasn't good. And again, this could be. Then I actually took action before, before even thinking about it too much, but, um, I know that analysis paralysis can hit a lot of folk and I wanted to be wary of not that, of that, of that not happening to me. This was part of my journey. If I lost, mo if I'd lost money on this, then it wasn't going to be completely, you know, it wasn't going to completely cripple me. Right. I thought, okay, this is, this is, this is part of my journey, make a calculated bet on this, right? Strategic bet. Uh, I'm not going to know everything, but I'd rather take action and do something than, than not. Um, and again, this would have, this, I wouldn't have bought several other ones and had the confidence to purchase out of state if it wasn't for a turnkey company. No, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, I, I give you a lot of respect because you're absolutely right. Most people, you know, are interested in real estate, but they're not actual real estate investors because they've nev never done anything with all the knowledge they acquire, whether it's reading books, listening to podcasts, it's always, you know, next week, next month, next year, or once I know a little bit more, then they do something. So at a certain point, you have to take action regardless of the risks. Of course, we try to mitigate those risks as, as much as we can, um, by building that knowledge base, but I mean, we're going to make mistakes. So it, it's better to get them out of the way early, I think than it is uh, later. It's just some mistakes are, are going to be more expensive than others. And, that, and that's all right. Because, I mean, I think it's a testament to you in terms of sticking with it because so many people have, you know, quit for so much less in terms of challenges that they've seen in, in real estate. You know, they're like, oh, screw this. I'm, I'm, I'm done. That was hard or I lost money or but uh, you you powered through and you learned from it and then you moved on. So, I hey uh, I give you respect in, on on that. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, I, another thing, and this is just a, to define the concept for me. When you say turnkey investing, how does that differ um, from just going to a realtor or a broker? What services exactly are they providing to you that that makes it um, turnkey? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, again, uh, this isn't a term and it's a great question. This isn't a term that I'd ever come across until I moved to America, right? This is turnkey. I, as a broad definition, it just means all in one, right? Completely hands off. It's all done in, 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 in one systemized approach, right? Um, what that actually means in my situation was that one company handled everything from, uh, the property purchase to the to, to the management of it, to the life of it, right. Of the property. So I can, you know, I, I can change with them now. If I want, I can go to a different property management company, but I purchased, you know, they sourced the property, they handled the acquisition. Um, and then, you know, everything in that, including, you know, title company, all that stuff. I didn't have to look at that. It's, it's all in one package. It's hand, we call it hands, hands off investment or hands free invest. If you want to call it that way, it's not quite, and I can explain later why it's not completely passive because, uh, um, right. You need to manage a property manager, 
but right. uh, but 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 yeah, it's as hand as it can be. Um, so technically, can be applied to any term, you know, any type of investment. Though, right? It's when everything is 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 self is self contained, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. And in terms of that transition, when you went from the the, the single family model to the the multifamily, was there any kind of light bulb? moment there. Um, I, I know you, you mentioned earlier going to, uh, a conference or, or zoom call, you know, talking to someone about it, not quite getting it that first time. What was that thing that, that sparked? And, you know, you were like, oh, I get it. If there, if there was such a moment. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't recall the exact moment per se, but it was, it was, I, I read, um, uh, Ken McElroy's book, uh, the ABCs of real estate, right? That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's one. And that was where I was like, okay, I can see how this, and that's a rich dad, poor dad book. Um, that was a, I think that was when it was really like, I could understand how the various parts of this, of the system worked, or how, you know, someone could, how, you know, you could, again, I, I just thought that anything above four units was like institutional investors. I didn't realize that actual individual, having said that, you know, my, my landlord in New York, you know, he owned several buildings. I think he started him. Start, I thought that was something you had to get in way back in the day. Maybe, maybe again, I hadn't really thought about that deeply, but clearly, you know, if my landlord's got more into my building now, he had to start somewhere. He's an individual. So, um, but yeah, that's what I thought. I thought maybe you had to be like very lucky or see the opportunity back in the day, or you had to be an institutional investor, I suppose. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, 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 so that, that, I think that, that was when I think reading that book, I, um, I read, uh, uh, a couple of others, um, Michael Blanc's book, um, you know, um, and, uh, I also read, uh, Brian, my first book, right. Um, mm -hmm. the hands off real estate investor. Um, and that, and that really helped create some clarity into, into, okay, this, this is something which, which can be done. Um, and it doesn't have to be large buildings can be smaller. Um, and I think, I think one of the key things, which I think, yeah, actually that's, that's thinking about it now was the libel moment was how commercial real estate is valued or multifamily is valued. Right. Mm. The fact that you can have by increasing the operations of a property, you can have an exponential result on the valuation of, 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 of the actual property, right? So every $1, depending on, you know, get too technical on cap rates and stuff, but every, every $1 that you can raise in like rent, for example, or just net operating income overall, right. Can have a 20 X impact on the valuation of that property. So that is, I think that's super powerful. And that's when you realize that, okay, if someone's, if, if, if you can be a strong operator and organize and, and, you know, get these elements in, in order, then, then this can be truly life changing wealth, even on a smaller building. If you're able to, if you own it completely out, outright yourself and you're able to then refinance it, like you get to harvest all that, you know, that's, which is, which, which, which is, which is amazing. Um, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. And so, so I guess to that point, um, you're right. It, it can be life changing in terms of the the goals that you set out for yourself though, I, did you have specific goals when you started with single family, like to say, Hey, like this is my, my freedom number. And this is how many single family houses I need to get with, you know, $200, um, income after you know, mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. And then if so, uh, did you like redo that equation once you started looking at multifamily and and have you defined that for the, the multifamily side? Yeah, this is, this is interesting. And I, I've got to be honest, I did not initially, again, I had loose numbers in my head. Right. And do I look at it now? Like not necessarily like super, super granular. Um, I have like a vision of what cash flow I need. What I've, what I've come to, what I came to realize in multifamily is that, uh, often if you are, if you're going to these more. Uh, you know, prestigious markets, which are, which are traditionally hot, right? Particularly during the pandemic, the cash flow might not necessarily be there and you need to be getting cash enough for the business to operate. But 
if you're able to raise the operations, you're going to get l- these large chunks of, of money come when you, when you do the refinance or sell, because you've been able to operate that. At a, so you've got to get out of like the income mindset a little bit. If you're investing in, 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 uh, in, in, in multifamily, to some extent, not to say there are properties, which will cash flow very well after say by Jason, it's over, but the real value in multifamily is that again, we call it value add, right? That's, and I think that's, that's key to be able to, you need to be okay with that. Um, some things that I'm thinking about now, just, and the supplements from thinking is that without income though, you're screwed. You need to have income in your own situation, right? Some, some way. So, uh, for me, that's why I'm, I still look for those single family opportunities because I know with precision, consistency and accuracy, right? Which, which, you know, particular areas what a single family will offer me, right? And if I get it at that price, the, the, from everywhere from in a particular zip code, I know that that will be a, another income source. So I still don't dismiss single families. And while it, you know, it can be blasphemy sometimes in, in their multi family, like, oh my God, if you're my graduate, it's like, it's like, no, like <laughs> I, I try to, I try to zone some of that stuff out and be like, that's good for a certain type of investment or strategy, right? When you want these large chunks, but at the same time, what's going to give you financial protection, right? And for me, having a consistent income, knowing that I have that is very important as well, uh, right? I've, got to, I've still got to build that up in, in my stage. It's like, I need to have a consistent way of giving me, myself protection for my W-2. Yeah, and I, I think what's key about what you just said is that everyone has their own individual situation. And so it's not like this, you know, panacea answer to... You, you get from financial point A to financial point B by doing this because everyone's situation is so different. Not everyone wants to be, uh, you know, an active multifamily investor. You know, pe- a lot of people are at the point in their life where they're either retired or, or maybe they, they love their job and they just want to do it passively. And that's okay too. They can get that income passively and, you know, that just helps their, their overall wealth building. And then others like you and me may want to do this full time, but they still have to think about income and the ways that income is produced in, uh, through syndications. And it's, you know, like most entrepreneurial ventures, right? It's, it's not necessarily consistent and it's not always big. It, it may be small chunks in something like asset management fees that come, you know, quarterly or monthly. Um, but, but really the big payoff is is either at the beginning of a deal when you get an acquisition fee or at the end when you, you sell and, and have poor refinance and, and everybody gets a, a nice chunk of those profits that you've hopefully built up by, by adding value. I just think that uh, too many people don't understand the complexity around evaluating what your income will be when they get into this business. And it's, it's not as straightforward as say, you know, on the single family side, like, oh, if I get you know, 40 single family houses with $200 of cash flow each, I'll be able to quit my job and never have to work again. Like that's beautiful. Like if, if you can make that work, that is, that is very straightforward and simple. It's just, it's not the same calculation. So I love how you, you have kind of a hybrid approach, you know, of, of building, you know, cash flow through the, the smaller properties. While I think the multifamily really speaks to the the wealth building over time. Would you agree with that? I think you've, yeah, you've, I think you summarize it very well. I think, uh, yeah, I was listening to the podcast recently and that really changed me some of the, you know, super, you know, wealth individuals. And they always say that's why they have entrepreneurial ventures is to provide those cash flows. So you can make these calculated bets, strategic bets, right? That's what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's your, with a multifamily investment, like you, especially if you have mo- other partners and so forth. You have less control and you've got to make sure that these folk you know, that you're finding with are operating this right. Cause if you don't, cause that's what you're betting on. You're betting on being able to raise the operation, uh, and, and, and get it, you know, get to that point where, uh, you know, like any business it's performance it's healthy, right? The cash flow is the health, the lifeblood of the, um, of, 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 of the property. Um, and you've got to do, I think I probably same to myself, right? How can I be financially healthy? Right. Uh, uh, and what's going to give me financial peace, right? And financial peace is, is that knowing that, okay, I know consistently that I'm going to have this, 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 you know, this income that will take care of my bills. 
so that I'm able to take these strategic bets that will, again, it's the velocity of money, right? It's, it, it gives you more, you know, you're able to grow it in that, in that kind of exponential way. Um, so absolutely. I think, I think you've got to, I think figure out a way, I think I, I you know, it, you know, I think figure out a way to get kind of consistent income. And that's why, whether it be books and blah, 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 you can do a bunch of different things. Um, I, I just really like coding. I, I, I owning kind of, you know, property that, that, and running it, running it, um, you know, in a way that's you know, professional, um, consistent. And I think I can apply those lessons to multifamily too. I think they're, they're, they're very sure. synergistic. Yeah. Great. Um, now any journey is easier and, and, and more fun, frankly. Uh, when you have people that embark on that journey with you. So who would you say are the individuals or professionals that have helped you get as far as you have? Yeah, we, I mean, we, it's, I've been very sort of blessed that, uh, you know, we've had, you know, so Ralph Fursey is my, my business partner. I'm very grateful to, to have found someone that we align with on, 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 on our core values, right. Of, of integrity and, and progress. Um, you know, and, 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 and a general inquisitive mindset, right? That's, that's, we, we, we both share that. Um, but at the same time, we have complementary skill sets, right? So he's, you know, he, he's responsible for kind of the investigation side, whereas on operational, right? I work for a, you know, for a, for a, for a large corporation, one of the, um, largest consumer goods companies, um, in the, in the world. And, uh, you know, I may, I'm hopefully able to leverage some of those kind of, you know, expertise and apply that to our business. Um, and Ralph certainly has those expertise as well. Um, but he has skills that let's say I don't, you know, I have to, I'm, I'm not as strong with. So, so, so it's great that we're able to, 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 to kind of have, you know, between the two of us, we're able to, um, we're able to, to, to provide the best for our business. So, um, and then we've had a, you know, very, very grateful to have, uh, you know, mentors and coaches, you know, I'm part of two coaching programs now. Uh, I, I did take my time and that was something which I didn't dive head first in, you know, instead of dive head first, it's really the same, you know, whether or not too quickly or not, I'm, I'm happy with, it. I learned my lessons, but, um, I, I get, I took, I took longer, longer time to assess these various, cause you know, these coaching opportunities, uh, spoke to several folk, followed, you know, a, a bunch of members that were within these before I committed to, 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 to some of these mastermind groups. And, um, yeah, I've, I've been very happy with, with, with what, you know, I'm able to contribute you know, and, 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 and what I'm getting out of them right now, it's, it's been invaluable because, uh, I certainly respect the craft of multifamily There's you know, while as a basis, it's again, it's a simple business, right? Um, there are a lot of sort of, you know, moving parts that, that can throw off and it's, and it's, and it's so rewarding to have, you know, advisors that can, that can, that I can call upon, um, you know, when, as and when we need them. Yeah. And I, I can certainly attest that. It, it all sounds simple in theory, but for some reason that I cannot explain, like every deal comes down to the wire. Like there, there's always like something happening. It's never been like from start to finish, just smooth sailing the, the whole way through. So you're right. Things happen and having someone that you could just pick up the phone and call and be like, what do I do? Uh, is, is very comforting. It goes to that peace of mind thing that you were, you were talking about earlier. And then, uh, it, you know, when it comes to partners. I think people don't appreciate, um, you know, especially on the multifamily side, because it, a lot of us start out doing single family and you could honestly do that yourself. You know, yeah, you may have your lawyer, you may have a realtor, et cetera, but you know, for all intents and purposes, you're, you're doing a lot of it yourself in, in multifamily. It is a team sport. Like there's, there's almost no way around it. I haven't met that exception yet. Who's like just doing everything themselves. There may be one, but, um, it, it's a team sport and you have to really know, like, and trust the, the people that you're working with too, because this isn't a short-term relationship, right? Like when you get into these deals with, with other people that it's usually in the, the three to seven year time frame, um, which is longer than a lot of marriages. So you have to think about that as you're, you're vetting these other people that you want to work with. That's what I found. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I absolutely agree. That was, we, we did take a lot of time to do that, to, to really get to know each other, you know, um, yeah. And we, I mean, we just, I mean, Ralph and I, before we decided to be partners, we would 
have regular checks. We were just kind of friends and sharing, um, like, you know, you know, and, and yeah. And, and I think the, the key exercise was our kind of core values and what we were, we were looking for. And that was the, the primary thing. If you're not aligned on that, you know, it, it can, it can, it can cause some conflict down the line and not to say we won't have content, the stuff that we disagree on, but, 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 you know, we're able to, to, to be reasonable, um, um, with which, whichever path and, and decisions we're making. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, having the right tools is important too, too. Um, what, what tools, uh, be it electronic or otherwise, uh, have you found have been the most helpful, um, in your business? Yeah. So we've, we, in terms of CRM, I've, we've still got to, in terms of, I'm not sure we're getting the most out of our current CRM system. So we're with, um, HubSpot right now, mm -hmm. uh, for a smaller business, just, I think you're somewhat restricted on, 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 on some of the capabilities. So, um, you know, we're looking to potentially look at all, all, all alternatives on that, but it's, uh, it's, it, that's been helpful just to just have everything tracked and be able to, I, I like with HubSpot, the great thing is you can integrate it with, uh, your, your email clients like Gmail and so forth. Um, it's, it's super great. I just, you can literally just tag, you know, tag contacts through your email on, on that. So I know the other CRM platforms do, I know, um, is it active campaign is another one that I've heard is, is one that a lot of multifamily, um, investors use. Um, I, I'm going to give a little secret. One of my best sort of email plugins is boomerang. 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 Yeah. Can, you, can you give me a little background on that? Yeah, absolutely. It's an email kind of reminder, uh, plugin. And you can set reminders to like follow up. You can, uh, you know, you can, uh, send emails later. I know that a lot of this is native to a lot of the email platforms, but boomerang still came up. I had it, I've been, been a customer for like 10 years, probably now. Uh, oh. yeah, yeah. I've had it for, for that long. I'm really just, just for my deals, I could follow up with stuff and you can, you can mark it. If someone doesn't respond, you can have it come back to you. Boomerang again, air quotes, boomerang back to you. So it's, yeah, I, I honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> be as productive without it. I, I would forget things if it wasn't for that. So, um, that's a super, super helpful plugin, I'd, I'd say. Oh, that's a great tip. I'll, I'll definitely uh, check that out and leave a, a link in the, in the show notes for everybody. Yeah. All right. This, this next, um, piece goes to the keys to success. So I want to ask you three questions and this will be about five minutes and I want you to, to, to give me your best advice on these. So what is one red flag every investor should look out for? Be they passive investor or active investor? I would say, I don't know if this, this counts as a red flag or not, but definitely do this. Definitely Google who you're investing with. <laughs> but sure, you'd be surprised what comes up in Google. And, you know, we'll let people's individual judgments lie, people change and whatnot. But for us, I think people's core values are people's core values, right? I'm not sure how much deviation they can be for that. So definitely Google people to get a feel for them. See if there's been any criminal, you know, you, you know there's a, you know, criminal records and what that often publicly shown on, on, um, on, on, on the, on the county records, right? So definitely you want to be able to just know who you're investing with, because, you know, as you said, Tim, right, you're in, you know, you're, you, once you're, once you invest with them, you're locked in for, for three, five years, seven years, plus sometimes even. So you, you really want to do your, do your research first. So I'd say certainly it's simple, but I've spoken to, you know, super, super academically qualified people and, you know, and they've, you know, they've invested with people that, you know, they haven't Googled before. And they're like, oh my God, have you, uh, have you seen this and that? Like. I work in, I work in, you know, I, I'm, I work in sort of search engine marketing and that's one of my, one of my sort of, um, background skills and, uh, you know, it comes probably native to me, but it, yeah, it, it's, it's something which, which, yeah, uh, I, I thoroughly recommend everyone do. No, you're right. Sometimes the, the simplest solution is, is the best one. I mean, we do it for, for recipes and everything else. If we're about to, you know throw down several tens of thousands of dollars into an investment, it's probably a good time to, to use the Google too. Um, what piece of advice would you give to every multifamily investor other than to, to Google yeah. their investing? <laughs> yeah, I suppose, yeah, that's, that's somewhat connected. One thing I would say is don't be afraid to take a bet on the underdog. Okay. Because. 
you know, I'm speaking from, from, I would say, do your, be actively passive. So get enough, like do your, should take the time to really understand this process. Um, and, and then get to know the person because while they might not always have the most ex direct experience, um, they might be, su you might be getting that, that, that golden, golden guy or girl who are on the upswing with a lot of potential, um, and, and, and could really knock your investment out of the park. And case in point, um, I, this, this, this worked out, this seems to have been working out for me. I, I invested with someone who, um, really low key, but I got the, the time, you know, took the time to, to know him, uh, really, you know, I, the, the good thing was I, I was somewhat, you know, had a certain level of aptitude at underwriting and was able to question and, 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 and his answers were, were all, were all fantastic. Um, uh, and yeah, he, because some of the newer, newer syndicates aren't, you know, the fees aren't going to be higher. The splits are going to be a bit more generous, uh, for the limited partners. Um, you know, if you take the time to really, you know, understand the opportunity, but understand the person, you know, the operator is key here always, as we know, right. You, um, uh, you, you bet on the, uh, the jockey, not the horse, right. That's typically what the, what the saying is, right. If I've got that right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, to get to know them and really it's, this is about people. If you can get strong at assessing people's skills, core values, right? Core values first, then their skills, right? Um, then you can really find a, an, an opportunity to, 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 to do very well as an LP investor. Like I, I, I might be almost doubling my money in less than in around 40, 15 months with a, again, this is a, again, part of it is luck of time market and stuff, but. I credit it to how the, the skills of this uh, skill of skills of this operator. And I'm going to, and I'm going to probably invest in, 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 in more of their deals now, because, you know, they've had, they've now had a proven record, but you know, I was, you know, I was able to, to, to kind of get on their, their, their first deal. Um, yeah. And I, I think you're right. Like, obviously the, the sponsor syndicator, whatever we want to call them are one of the most important pieces of that. Um, but that might just be the one individual that we already know, right? It's important to to look at the rest of the team that we just talked about. And are there other people on that team who have more experience who could kind of, you know, bolster them up and answer the questions that, you know, they may not have been exposed to yet. Um, it's about, again, you know, mitigating the lack of experience, the risk um, all around, because the people on that team may bring different levels of experience, um, but it'll it'll help support that, that less experienced person, um, that, and you know, the market itself. I mean, we, we've seen that you can go in and, um, you know, not to be very good, but you look like a damn genius if you go into some of these markets at the right time. So, so timing and market can be huge, but, but that's where, you know, passive investors need to, to need to know the difference, right? Do they know, like, and trust the person that they're investing with? And even if that person doesn't have enough experience, what about the rest of the team? And are they a part of a mentoring or coaching program where they can call on that experience of someone um, who's much more experienced than they are? I think that would give uh, me peace of mind uh, if I were investing with someone. But, but certainly, like you said, everyone has to start out somewhere. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, mitigating that risk by, by looking at the, the total picture and not just that, that individual, I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. And the final question, what does success look like to you? Uh, so, yeah, that is a deep <laughs> question. I, I think for me, I, I relate it to, I think Tony, Tony Robbins actually mentioned this, right? It's like, it's progress, right? I think that the, the key to success is like happiness, which is, I think, you know, which is really, which is a direct, um, I think I study Robbins would, 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 would say is, 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 is due to progress, right. In life. I think the key to happiness is, is progress. Um, and happiness for me is success, right. And I, I think as long as I'm one, you know, I'm getting better or my, you know, I'm able to, 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 to have balance as well. I think that's, that's, that's super key. Um, because you know, we, you know, obviously Tim, you know, we know each other from real estate and things like that, but I'm not obsessed. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> because I have other interests in life as well, you know, like my, my wife and I love traveling and, and ex experiencing other stuff. So it's, um, I, I love real estate for what it can provide. Right. Again, it's, I, I mentioned this earlier, but financial peace, it's that I'm very blessed that I have and my W2 actually enjoy I'm in a field that I actually enjoy. I'm not miserable every day when I'm waking up, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to, 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 you know, to partake in, um, a field, which I do find really interesting. So as long as I'm progressing, right. In every, in every aspect of that, my, you know, my, my career, my, you know, my financial, you know, situation, um, and my health, I put health really super high in that. That's, that, that's super high. So it's a balance of all those, those, those elements and my relationships. If I'm able to balance all those and make progress in all those, um, then that, then that ultimately looks like success to me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's all about balance. You know, if, if you spend all your time doing this and your goal was to have more time, then what are you doing? <laughs> you know, keep, keeping an eye on those priorities, uh, which like you said, you know, traveling your wife, um, everything else. So absolutely. Um, all right, Dinesh, well, this has been great. Please tell our guests how they can get a hold of you. And if you have anything else that, that you'd like to share with them. Yeah, look, I, I, thanks to him again. I, this is, uh, you know, if, if any of your, if your guests want to get in contact with me, they can, um, add me on, on, on LinkedIn. If you can you know, provide a link to that on your, on your show notes, or, uh, I'll, you know, provide a link to my calendar as well. So they can set some time up with me or they can, just, um, head over to realvest.com slash Tim. And we've actually created a, 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 a special guide for those who are just wanting to get started in real estate. Again, that's real vest with R E I L V E S T, uh, com slash Tim. And you can, and, uh, you, you can download the guide there. Okay, great. Well, I, I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, Dinesh, thanks again. Uh, we'll have all your information in the show notes. Uh, I appreciate you coming on and look forward to seeing you doing big things on your journey to multifamily millions. <laughs> okay, thanks, Dave. Really appreciate it. Thanks. You've been listening to the Journey to Multifamily Millions podcast with host Tim Little. Be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a review as well to help us reach more people like you. For more information on how you can start your journey to multifamily millions, visit ZanaInvestments.com. And remember, every journey starts with a single step and there's always more to learn.